My name is Hannes Leopold Seder. I'm based in Austria, exactly in Steyr. And I'm heading up the Industrial Services Center. We are remanufacturing industrial bearings here in Steyr in Austria for Europe. And we are also the reference center for SKF globally. So then let's start bringing you the topic of industrial bearing remanufacturing a little bit closer under the aspect also of the circular economy. SKF's business and strategy is based on a deep understanding of the trends and drivers that impact or have the potential to impact all markets, regions, and industries in which the group operates. One of the SKF solutions following these trends and drivers like the environmental challenges is SKF's remanufacturing offer. SKF strategy is the foundation from which the group works towards its vision of a world of reliable rotation and its mission of becoming the undisputed leader in the bearing business. Sustainability is embedded in SKF's business. This is very, very important for us. The strategic focus areas will guide SKF to successfully leverage the opportunities created by digitalization. At the same time, they will help SKF to reduce its own and the customer's environmental impact and energy consumption and to take a greater part in the circular economy. There are a lot of challenges and one of the challenges is how we use our resources. In 2019, we used 1.7 times more resources from the planet than the nature can renew in the whole year. And we have to counteract it. And there we support with remanufacturing. It is about responsible consumption and production. This is the goal number 12 of the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. And this we support with remanufacturing, but also with other SKF offerings. What we would like to achieve is we would like to move from a linear to a circular economy. This is a big topic these days. Instead of take, make, consuming something, later on wasting it, we move towards the circular economy where we would like to reduce, for example, reduce of the material spent. We are reusing materials, components, and later on we recycle them. Taking now a little bit closer look on what SKF is offering and how we are supporting this transition from a linear towards a circular economy. SKF has a variety of offerings and I would like just to name a few of them. For example, Recon Oil. It is one of the youngest family members of the SKF group. And Recon Oil, for example, is about purification of oil down to nano level. And by doing so, this is enabling the circular use of oil. Very important to mention is also moving towards a circular economy that you monitor your assets. We are doing this, for example, in our remote monitoring centers. And of course, a vital part of this is also remanufacturing. And now let's take a little bit of a closer look into remanufacturing. One essential benefit of remanufacturing is that already processed material is used for a longer time. Just to give you one example, a bearing that is normally replaced after three years could be remanufactured twice and last up to nine years providing the function of three new bearings. So this should give you an imagination 
of the benefits we provide with remanufacturing and how this is supporting the transition from a linear towards a circular economy. The remanufactured bearings and units from SKF function as new and are delivered to customer with the same warranty as new bearings. For you as our customers, this brings benefits such as reduced lead times, leaner operation, and often also lower costs. The remanufactured bearings cut emissions in the production phase by up to 90% compared to the equivalent new bearing. Remanufacturing is found in many SKF business models, usually in the combination with condition monitoring and predictive maintenance, but also as a standalone product. Important to mention here is that remanufacturing is supporting your CO2 reduction goals. And now let's have a quick look on the video to see the difference in process steps from a new one compared to a remanufactured one. As you could see, when you produce an, a new bearing, it takes approximately 100 process steps to finish it, compared to a remanufactured one, where we use approximately 10 process step, steps. And this should illustrate the potential what remanufacturing can provide. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look to the CO2 emissions you can avoid. In this case, I have uh, picked one example of a spherical roller bearing, 23630. This is a bearing of 630 millimeter bore diameter. Typical application, for example, is a, a paper mill. This bearing weighs 590 kilos and the CO2 emissions you can avoid is almost one ton compared to producing a new bearing of equivalent type and size. So a lot of people ask themselves, one ton, is this a lot? Is this just a fraction of contribution? And therefore we have to make this comparison. One ton of CO2 emissions is comparable to flying from Frankfurt to Madrid three and a half times back and forth which is quite a lot. Or if you eat 33 kilos of beef, or when you drive your new car, 8,400 kilometers. So this shows the potential of avoided CO2 emissions when you go for a remanufactured bearing compared to a new one. Also, I would like to mention all the remanufacturing done here at the facility in Austria is done with green, green energy. So how do we define remanufacturing? It is about rebuilding a product to the specifications of the original manufactured one, using a combination of reused, repaired and new parts. What we are clearly aiming for is meeting the expectations of a new product. This can be done by the processes, by the standards we have put in place and the quality checks as well. So clearly a remanufactured product is virtually meeting the expectations of a new product. When you go for when you look on the service life of a bearing, I would like to give you one example here. Certain influences can have a big impact on the service life of the bearing. For example, 
when the bearing suffers from contaminated conditions or poor installation of the bearing in the application. The service life can also be reduced by poor lubrication or for example, when a lubrication line is broken and also by abnormal fatigue. This is all what you don't expect, but these things are happen in reality. And when you start with a service life expectation of 100%, the service life is reduced by these impacts. And what we do with remanufacturing, we give the bearing a second or third life. So that brings the bearing towards the expected original expected service life. We are remanufacturing bearings generally once or twice, but we also see bearings which we remanufactured five or even six times already. Also, this should give you an in in imagination and indication what can be achieved by remanufacturing. To be able to remanufacture bearings, it is crucial that you have an early problem detection. Giving you here the example of a pulp and paper customer in Sweden, where we are monitoring more than 700 connected lubrication and condition monitoring points. And the monitoring is done in our monitoring center in Göteborg. By doing so, we are reducing the number of unplanned stops and improve the sustainability performance. Now taking a look on the graph on the left hand side, when a machine stops due to a bearing failure, then it's most likely too late for remanufacturing a bearing. So therefore you have to put monitoring systems in place. SKF monitoring system allow you an early defect or damage detection and the consequence of an early detection of an upcoming problem is that the likelihood of being able to remanufacture a bearing is very high as the damages are not severe the remanufacturing cost is lower. Of course, the more damaged a bearing is, the likelihood of remanufacturing is reduced, respectively the cost of remanufacturing increases. Digitalization is important. I have mentioned that a few times already and giving you here the example of a mining customer and digitalization, the transformation, affects all parts of the value chain. From digital twins in design and manufacturing, through integrated planning, purchasing, and customer use, to maintenance and condition monitoring. It also changes the way companies go to market. Further, the cost to improve performance is drastically reduced by digitalization. We can detect defects before they cause damages and take preventive actions. We do this by installing sensors, SKF condition monitoring, and automated lubrication system. At the same time, we learn more about why assets fail and we use the knowledge when we develop the next generation of products and services. Today, we monitor millions of customer bearings, a number that will grow exponentially in the years to come. At SKF, we have long recognized the importance of digitalization within the industry. We pioneered some of the elements that formed Industrial Internet of Things years ago and has been monitoring equipment remotely for almost two decades. This digital transformation is supporting to utilize the full potential of remanufacturing and therefore 
also the transformation from a linear towards a circular economy. Now I would like to move on to give you a couple of examples of bearings we remanufactured. On the left hand side, you see a spherical roller bearing, how it typically looks after cleaning it and disassembly. You find fretting corrosion on the outer diameter of the bearing. You also see that the roller is cracked. And on the right hand side, you see the bearing after remanufacturing. In this case, the remanufacturing was done by using a grinding process. And we also replaced the rolling elements by new ones. Yeah, you might ask yourself now, when, when you grind a bearing, you take away material. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And when we do so, and to maintain the clearance of the original product, we have to use oversized rolling elements. And those rolling elements are also produced in the service center, which gives us a huge flexibility from timing point of view. Two more examples on um, remanufactured spherical roller bearings. On the left hand side, a spherical roller bearing again with steel cage. On the right hand side, another spherical roller bearing, in this case with a brass cage and black oxidizing. These bearings or black oxidizing is used, for example, in the paper industry, the marine industry. You find it also in wind gearboxes and a lot of other applications. Amongst the largest bearings from diameter point of view, we are remanufacturing slewing bearings. And again here, a typical picture of the condition of a slewing bearing before remanufacturing. You see wear marks, standstill corrosion, and on the right hand side, how the bearing looks like after remanufacturing. Here in Steyr, we are remanufacturing bearings up to three meters in diameter. When you go above that for slewing bearings, we have our service center in Saint-Cyr in France. Amongst the bearings we mentioned, I mentioned, we are also remanufacturing smaller bearings. In this case, um, bearings used in the metal industry. We classify them on the picture on the left hand side as caster bearings, simply comes from the application, continuous casting, where we are remanufacturing open and sealed spherical roller bearings or car bearings. On the ring, you see also a marking remanufactured by SKF. So all the bearings we are remanufactured are marked with the term remanufactured by SKF followed by a sequence of numbers, which is, which is the unique identifier for this bearing to ensure traceability of our remanufacturing process. But also, as I mentioned earlier, we, we are remanufacturing bearings more than once to see how often these bearings have already been remanufactured. On the right hand side, you see another bearing type used in the uh, metal industry, so called baking bearings. Those baking bearings are used in centimeter mills and are also remanufactured. Basically, we can remanufacture every kind of bearing, every type of bearing, and also almost every size of bearing. Another area where we offer remanufacturing is the remanufacturing of housings. In this case, it's a typical housing used in the paper industry, rocker arm design 
on the left hand side how we receive the housing before remanufacturing. On the right hand side you can see that the housing from the outside is not only painted but also we have changed the way how you fix the housing to the machine frame and why this change has been done is on the remanufactured one we equip the housing with the carb bearing which takes the axial displacement of the shaft within the bearing whereas the other design which is equipped with a spherical roller bearing the axial displacement is taking part between the housing and the machine frame so also these de design changes can be incorporated in the remanufacturing process now let's take a very simplified look on the remanufacturing process you have two main process steps one is the analysis part and the other one is the remanufacturing part and in between you have the customer decision to go for remanufacturing or not when we look to the analysis part we usually start with a cleaning process followed by inspection when we talk about inspection this is on one hand visual inspection you see here on the picture one operating operator marking areas of imperfection inspection is also done uh, uh, by measuring the bearing so to ensure that the bearing dimensions are still within the tolerance of the new one this is all summarized in a documentation we call it analysis report which is provided to you as our customer the inspection and documentation is also then for us the conclusion for the remanufacturing recommendation and there are different processes we apply for example polishing process or grinding process and this leads then to the quotation towards you our customers when the positive decision is taken to go for remanufacturing we start with the process and we are remanufacturing all components inner ring of the bearings outer ring of the bearings rolling elements cages if the bearings are equipped with seals we are replacing the seals by new ones all this is supported with constant quality checks again to ensure that the bearing remains within the same tolerances as the new bearing if there is a deviation for example the bore uh, of the inner ring is worn out due to certain application conditions and we would not meet the tolerances then of course we inform our customers and there are good reasons why to accept this from case to case so after these quality checks the assembly is done the unique marking of the bearing is carried out then of course the preservation of the bearing packaging and shipping not to forget also in addition to remanufacturing we are offering also another service level which is basically checking the condition of bearings you might have a stock of bearings which is relatively old and have exceeded the shelf life of a bearing instead of scrapping this bearing we can analyze the condition charge the condition and offer this to you as a service as well and in case needed we then of course remanufacture this bearing this is also supporting the transition from a linear 
to the circular economy. One of my favorite slides is actually the following. And um, we used to say, remanufacturing makes everyone a winner. And um, here are a few examples why this is the case. Remanufacturing supports you increasing the profitability. On one hand, it offers the potential for cheaper products, but there comes much more with that. It supports you to increase the machine uptime. For example, in case there is no, no new bearing available, remanufacturing can increase the standstill time significantly. It also supports you to lower the operational expenses. I have mentioned the reduced CO2 emissions already a few times and it reduces maintenance. So you might ask now, why is remanufacturing reducing maintenance? And there is a very simple explanation. When we are analyzing use bearings uh, in our service center, we categorize them according to ISO standards. And certain failure modes like uh, uh, or certain findings like corrosion might lead to the conclusion, okay, there is something wrong in the application. For example, with the lubrication or with the sealing arrangement. And, and if we identify here a pattern, this uh, allows us together with you to take a closer look to your application and by taking the findings of the analysis during the remanufacturing process, you open the potential to analyze the asset, improve the asset, and therefore reduce the maintenance. Now let's take a look what one of our customers says about remanufacturing. Hi. My name is Pekka Virsiheimo, Central Workshop Manager here SSAP Rahe in Finland. SSAP aims to be the safest steel company in the world. Our vision is to contribute a stronger, lighter and more sustainability world. Remanufactured bearing is one good example to support our vision and principles. SSAP uses remanufactured bearing in our steel machinery, reducing maintenance, energy, waste, and cost. With this example, we take responsibility to improve and contribute to a better world. Thank you. So this is a very clear and, and, and strong message. They are committed to improve, they are committed to change, and they are committed to sustainability with the help of remanufactured bearings. Of course, amongst a lot of other initiatives they have put in place. So where are we with remanufacturing? We are almost everywhere. And SKF supplies more than 40 industries globally with products and services, both directly and indirectly through a network of over 7,000 distributors. The offering includes developing and manufacturing a broad product range of bearings, seals and lubrication systems, as well as rotating shaft services and solutions for machine health, assessment, reliability engineering and remanufacturing. One of our strengths is the ability to keep developing new technologies that are used to create value adding solutions. This is very important to us. This gives competitive advantage for you as our customer and contributes at the same time to a sustainable global society. Out of these applications here, which you see, I want to pick one specific one. And this is the aircraft. 
I don't know how many of you know that SKF is also remanufacturing aircraft bearings, aero engine bearings, to be exact. And why I mention this is we all know what can happen if an aero engine fails. What I want to say is that we have standards in place, we have procedures in place, and quality controls in place. As I mentioned before, with an SKF remanufactured bearing, we are matching, meeting the expectations of a new product. This is very important to us and for you as our customers. SKF is remanufacturing bearings since more than 20 years. It all started in the railway industry and in the heavy industry, like mining and mineral processing, the metals industry, pulp and paper, but there are many, many others. One of the youngest industries attracted by remanufacturing is the wind industry. There, we are mainly remanufactured remanufacturing bearings for the gearboxes which are serviced. As our customers are global, we have also a global network of remanufacturing centers to meet the requirements of our global customers. As mentioned, Steyr in Austria is the reference center in the SKF group, that means the processes which have been put in place by the other centers are implemented here and then cascaded into the other remanufacturing centers to ensure highest quality standards to meet the expectations of a new product. So I would like now to invite you to join the circular movement. And there are a lot of offerings, as mentioned at the beginning of my presentation. And once again, one of the youngest member in the SK family is SK Frequent Oil. SK Frequent Oil offers a sustainable lubrication solution that saves costs related to purchasing and disposing of oil. We are also remanufacturing complete lubrication systems, as well as machine tool spindles, railway bearings, and last but not least, industrial bearings. So once again, I would like to invite you to join the circular movement. Thank you. <laughs>